Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on parameters. Under this parameter discussion, I have discussed what is Z or impedance parameters. I have also discussed on Y, which is also known as emittance parameters. Further on this, I also have done a discussion on S parameters, part one and part two series. This video, I'm going to discuss on an example, how can we actually extract up or obtain the S parameters, for example, from a 3 dB antenator. This will be the part three series discussion on S parameters. If you're keen to know more about parameters, I have put the playlist under the description. So please take a look on those video in order to fully understand on the parameters such as Z, Y and also S parameters currently. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, sincere thanks for your strong support. This is what we have discussed on part one and part two series discussion on S parameters. Earlier on, on this part two series, I have introduced A1, B2, B1, and A2. In short, A1 basically are all the incident wave and B1 and also B2 are all the reflected wave. Basically, this one is to indicate that port number one, which is at the input. And for this case here, this will be port number two, which is denoted as output. Why I want to do a revisit on this is because technically this A1, B1, B2, A2, they don't make any sense. So therefore, in order to make this notation meaningful, we are going to replace them. For example, A1, I'm going to replace them with B1+. Plus. As for A2, I'm going to replace them as B2+. Plus. Same as B1, I'm going to replace them as B1-. Minus. And B2, I'm going to replace them as B2-. Minus. Why we need to do this? So in, if instead of defining the voltage wave direction, for example, A1, A2, B1, and B2, relative to each port, they are defined by their absolute direction as forward. Okay, when we, the wave is actually forward, we want to define as V plus. And when the wave is actually reflected, we want to denote them as V minus wave. Then this S parameters will take on a more intuitive meaning. Okay, so which means that over here, once glance, I know that if this is a plus, I am going to know that this will be an incident wave. And this actually occur at port number one. Same over here, if I saw a plus, I know that this will be an incident wave at port number two. Over here, I saw it's a minus, so therefore I know that this will be a reflected wave at port number one. Same over here, I saw a minus, I know that this will be a reflected wave at port number two. So which means that instead of A, B, I actually use this kind of notation, okay, which means that it's much more clear as what I mentioned earlier on, A1 probably does not make any sense to me. But if I know that this plus means it's an incident wave, then this will be a meaningful. So this is the earlier on on part two series discussion on the S parameters. Again, from here, I actually replace them. So this B1 is actually B1 minus, which is shown here. B2, which is B2 minus, which is shown over here. And same for A1 and A2. A1 will be B1 plus, which is shown here. And A2 will be B2 plus again, which is shown over here. Next. Okay, so this will be the equation. If I open up the matrix over here. Okay, so this will be the equation. And again, I can replace all the B term and all the A term over here. Okay, so basically I put it over here. But in the interest of time, I can't really go through them one by one, but I guess you understand what I want to imply. Same as for all this also, for example, early on on part two series discussion, I have discussed what is S11, okay, which is B1 over A1. 
as I told you, B1 probably don't make any sense. So therefore, under this B1, I know that it will be replaced by B1 minus, which is indicated here. Same for A1, which is going to represent by B1 plus, which is shown over here. This A2, okay, basically A2 is B2 plus, which is indicated here, which is equal to zero. And that's how I obtain my S11. Same for S12, S21, and S22. But again, in the interest of time, I will skip this part. But I guess more or less you are able to understand what I want to mention over here. Okay, let's start by doing an example. Okay, this task here basically tell us to find the scattering parameters or S metric or S parameters of a 3 dB antenator circuit shown below. Okay, over here, this will be denoted as port number one. This will be denoted as port number two. Firstly, let's start by finding what is S11. Okay, so S11 can be found as a reflection coefficient seen at port 1 when port 2 is terminated in a match load. Okay, so if you still remember under this S11 here, basically you can see that in order to ensure that A2 or B2 plus, okay, basically the incident wave at port number 2 okay, equals to 0, I need to put a match load. So when I actually put a match load, this will be equals to 0. So this is what it mean over here. So therefore, I need to put a match load at port number 2, which is shown over this diagram here. So this is a question. You can see that early on, part, port 2 is actually just an open circuit. But when we actually want to obtain S11, I need to terminate port 2 with a match load, which is 50 ohm for this case here. So after we've done this, we are ready to calculate S11. Okay, so this is the equation as I shared with you earlier on how to obtain this S11. Okay, so S11 is also known as the reflection coefficient and a lot of books you can actually obtain this equation here. Okay, but key thing I want to emphasize, okay, uh, we need to put a match look on port 2, which is I have shown it to you earlier on. So basically, this is how we can actually obtain S11. If we are able to know my Z in, okay, Z0, I already know which is 50 ohm. So basically, Z in is basically the input impedance when I actually look into this direction. So how can I actually calculate my Z in over here? Over here, you can see that these two resistors, they are actually in series. So I can actually add them up into 58.56, which is indicated here. And after I adding up these two resistors, these two resistors, again, you can see that they are actually parallel with 141.8, okay, which means that these two resistors now, Okay, this is the combination of this resistor and this resistor. Since they are in series, I can add them together. And these two resistor now, they are actually connected in parallel. So if I want to get my Z in, okay, what happened is basically after that, I can see that this 856 is in series of the resulting resistance. And hence, basically from here, I will be able to calculate the impedance of the input characteristics. So this is the equation when we actually get in parallel. So over here, okay, I just want to quickly open up the bracket on over here. So this will be intact, will be still 8.56. This is when the two resistors are in parallel. The equation is mentioned here. So what I need to do is basically 58.56 multiplied by 141.8, which is shown over here, I just multiply. While over here is 58.56 plus 141.8. Again, this is basically... The formula when resistor they are actually in parallel. So from here I calculate that this will be 856. Over here, what I need to do is I punch the calculator. Okay, I should be able to arrive this answer, which is 41.44. And when these two things add together, they are actually almost 50 ohm. So over here, I can see that my S11 is equal to zero. Why? Z in is equal to 50 and Z out is equal to 50. So basically over here, the outcome will be zero. And hence, S11, which is my reflection coefficient, will be equal to zero. Okay, so when I actually conclude this, I also can conclude that my V1 minus, which means that the reflected wave okay, from the port number one, this will be zero. If this is not zero, I will not be able to obtain the reflection coefficient equal to zero. 
because if you still remember, basically S one one is basically I actually put my source at port one. I actually also measure the refracted wave. So if this is equal to zero, therefore my refracted wave must be equal to zero. So therefore, this is the outcome here. As for S two two, because you can see that they are actually symmetric. Okay, so you can see that there will be a point of symmetric over here. Okay, forget about this fifty ohm because they don't actually exist in the circuit. So basically from here, therefore, I also conclude that S22 will be equal to S11, which is equal to zero. Okay, so from here, you can see that I actually managed to obtain my S11 and S22 value, which is equal to zero. Next. Okay, let's move. How can we actually obtain S21? Okay, we can find S21 by applying an incident wave at port number one. Okay, so if you remember on the S parameters on the part one series, I have also discussed on this. I insert my source at port one. I actually measure it at port two. Okay, so B1 plus, okay, which is the incident wave at port number one. Okay, and measure the outcoming wave at port two. Okay, which is B2 minus here. Okay, this is equivalent to the transmission coefficient from port one to port two. Okay, so this equation, okay, which is not new, I have actually introduced in part two series discussion on the S parameters. And earlier on, I have also discussed about this equation. It simply just represent. Okay, so basically I obtained this. As for this case here, again, I need to put my match load at port two. Basically, this is what it means over here. I need to put my match load at port two. Early on, I have also obtained that this S11 and S22 is equal to zero, and therefore this B1 minus is equal to zero, okay, which is here. Okay, so with this, okay, because S22 is also equal to zero, can you still remember? And hence from here, okay, I know that this B2 plus must be also equal to zero. So basically what left, which is unknown, okay, basically will be B1 plus and B2 minus, basically this will be unknown, which actually will be used to calculate my S21. So if you see here, this is B2 minus, and this is B1 plus here. So therefore, okay, in order not to confuse, okay, let's quickly re represent this. So for example, this B1 plus, I just used to represent by B1, okay, which is shown over here. This will be the voltage B1. As for B2 minus here, basically I just want to know my voltage drop across the 50 ohm resistor. So this will be under B2. Okay, how can we actually find the so-called S21 over here? So if this is S21, I need to find my B2 minus and also V1 plus. Okay, so we are ready to find this here. Again, if you want to find all this here, okay, I actually need to do this equation, which is B2, okay, which is over V1. Okay, then I will be able to find my S21. How can I actually find my voltage V2 here? Okay, so from here you can see that firstly how I'm going to do is basically I'm going to combine these three resistors into one resistor. As you can see from here, I combine these three resistors into one over here. Okay, so earlier on I have mentioned that these two resistors that are connected in series, after that they are in parallel with this 141.8. Okay, so over here you can see that when they are actually series, I actually can add them up which is 58.56. Okay, so over here, they are actually parallel with another resistor, which is 141.8. So earlier on, I have already discussed how can we actually calculate the overall resistor when they are actually connected in parallel. So what over here, I just punched my calculator. I should be able to arrive this 41.44 ohm. So this will be the outcome of a resistor value over here. Okay, again, Okay, I need to find what will be my voltage over here. So my voltage over here, basically I can use my voltage divider rule, if you still remember. So V1 multiplied by the resistor value over here, okay, which is another resistor here, plus this 41.44, which is indicate over here. Okay, so basically this is just a voltage divider rule, okay, so which I believe you guys already know what's this. So from here, I can compute that this V3 is equals to 0 0.8288 V1. Okay, so basically this is the voltage at over here, okay, outcome here. 
and basically with respect to V1 will be 0 0.8288 V1. Okay, again, okay, let me rewrite this whole diagram over here. And I have calculated what will be my V3 value. Okay, V3 will be the voltage drop over here. And the key thing is basically I need to find what is my V2 with and also V1. Okay, so once I obtain my V3 over here, okay, the voltage, this resistor, I can totally ignore because I already have my voltage value, which is 0 0.8288 V1. So I need to find what will be my voltage at V2. Over here is quite clear that you can see that V2, okay, if I want to find my V2, okay, basically will be V3 multiplied by 50. And again, these two resistors, they are actually collected in series. I need to add them out. Basically, this again will be the voltage divider rule. Okay, so over here, this V3, okay, which is 0 0.8228 V1 here. So I replace this V3 by this number here. Okay, I punch my calculator. I should be able to arrive at this equation. And for S21, if you still remember, will be simply this V2 over V1. Okay, if you cannot remember, let's quickly revisit here. Okay, remember, I let this V2 minus equals to V2. And this V1 plus is equals to V1. So in order to get my S21, okay, it will be like V2 over V1, okay, which is illustrated here, V2 over V1. And from here, I calculate that it will be 0 0.7077. And from here, I conclude that S21 will be equal to 0 0.7077. Same for S12, which I'm not going to show it to you over here. But I guess now you should know that S12 is actually equal to S21 will be equal to 0 0.7077. So from this example here, you can see that how I actually obtain S11 and also S22 because of symmetric, they are exactly the same. As for this page here, I have illustrated how can I actually obtain the S21. Again, they are all symmetric. So therefore, S21 is equal to S12. So from here, I successfully extract up all the S parameters from the example which is illustrated here. Okay, so basically this is an example which is going to illustrate here. Okay, so I have shown how can we actually extract up all the S parameters or S metric. Okay, with this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now.